Welcome back. We're talking about your life right now, and it's going to be life-changing, I guarantee you, because God gives us instruction how to handle our lives. We're reading out of Luke chapter 16, the story of the shrewd manager, where Jesus teaches us the proper perspective we need to have towards God and men. In this story, as we said earlier, a manager was accused of not being trustworthy with his master's belongings. In fact, the owner said, you're wasting my stuff, my money. And yet when he was let go, the manager proved to the owner because he made some arrangements with some company owners with some kind of shady dealings to profit himself. The owner said, "Uh uh-huh, you're shrewd. You have the ability. You have the ability to strategize a plan. You just chose not to do it for me. Although I gave you a trust. I trusted you with my money. I trusted you with my assignment. Now, as I said earlier, our culture is just full of this attitude because people want to bypass the season of preparation. Now, preparation involves, of course, building what you need where you're headed, like these lobster traps had to be built and understood, but also your character has to be trained to trust, to be trusted. See, no one steps into a place of great uh, authority or great visibility without being tested first. And so Jesus tells us in this story, Luke chapter 10, that the master said, wow, he commended him for acting shrewdly. All right. The master then goes, which is Jesus talking here, then tells us a very, very valuable lesson. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Stop right there. That's not mine. Why do I care? I mean, this isn't mine. I don't own this. I'm just, I'm just biding my time. I'm just here for a paycheck. The Bible says, if you do not know how to take care of someone else's assignment as your own, let me just underline that, as your own, meaning you're not a hireling. You're not there just for the money. You own it with the responsibility given to you to carry out the assignment. If you prove you are not trustworthy with that small assignment, The Bible says God will not promote you into greater assignments. And quite frankly, if men knew of your slothfulness, they themselves would not promote you. So we found a valuable lesson here. For instance, we look at King David. David wasn't born a king. He was born a shepherd. Now, at that time, being a shepherd was one of the lowliest common occupations you could have. Taking care of the family sheep was a vital, vital task to the welfare of the family. But it did not bring a lot of honor in the community and people that watched because shepherds were looked down upon as a very common occupation. Yet David says, the Bible says, David risked his life twice, once with the bear and once with the lion. Not only did he try to run them off, the Bible says he actually chased after them and grabbed them by the hair and slew them lest they come back when he wasn't watching. He took care of the problem. He risked his life for a sheep. Did he really for a sheep? No, he risked his life because he'd been given a trust. And David knew that the trust required responsibility. It had nothing to do with the value of the sheep as much as it did as the value of his word. The bear and the lion thus promoted David into a place in God's eyes as someone who was diligent and could possibly lead a nation, which he then became. Or how about Joseph? Joseph was in Potiphar's house. He was put there, of course, by his brothers uh, with a treacherous plot to sell him into slavery, to even to kill him. And that Potiphar was uh, using him as a slave. And then, of course, Potiphar's wife accused Joseph of raping her, and which didn't happen. So he was falsely accused, he was thrown into into prison. But in the prison, it says, they took such great care and responsibility over his small tasks that the jailkeeper saw him and saw that he was above average. In other words, he actually cared about what happened in prison, even though he had a life sentence. 
And in that case, the jailkeeper put him in charge of the entire prison. So at that time, when Joseph was over the entire prison, Pharaoh had a dream he couldn't explain. And so God gave Joseph this little slave that was cast into prison with a life sentence, gave him the interpretation. God worked out a plan to put Joseph in front of Pharaoh and he was able to actually tell Pharaoh the interpretation of the dream. Joseph was promoted to be number two. The only person higher than him was Pharaoh himself. Now think about this story. It's a tremendous story coming out of prison to rule over Egypt. Did that just happen? Was it an accident? Did God just choose Joseph for that purpose? Well, yes, God chose him, but Joseph had to be qualified. He had to pass the test. He had to prove himself not a hireling, but his honor towards the Lord and his commitment to himself with integrity set him in a place to be trusted with, in, with any situation he found himself in, and he found promotion. Friend, people try to take shortcuts. It's amazing when you drive into a a fast food restaurant, maybe 15, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes before they close, I have seen such incredible disrespect for the owner of the restaurant as the young people or the employees scramble around trying to close the shop early. You know, they put the chairs on the tables, turn the lights off, uh, try to act like no, you know, no one's here, it's time to close. I remember one restaurant I walked in and they were all, all ready to close and walk. I said, wait a minute, guys, you still got 15 minutes. And they got, oh, they got all upset because now they knew they had to cook another, whatever it was, a hamburger, whatever. What they don't realize is that, let's say they're working at a fast food restaurant like McDonald's. They think, this is ridiculous. I don't like cooking hamburgers, but they're working in the number one franchise that makes hamburgers in the world with thousands of, of outlets. What they should be thinking is, I'm gonna do my very best here because I am gonna learn how they do what they do. How are they able to make just a hamburger go across the world? Everyone's made a hamburger, but how did they make it where everyone wanted their hamburger? And how do they put the systems in place to actually take it internationally across the whole world with thousands of locations? You see, they were in a great place of learning as they would have engage their trust to that job, they would also have learned principles that would have set them in place to be either an owner themselves someday or a great manager for someone else. But the point is they qualified for promotion. So I wanna encourage you today to just take some time. If you find you've kind of slipped a little bit, I would just make the, 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 the comment, step in there. Just make a decision. I'm gonna be the best employee at my workplace. I'm gonna do the very best of all the employees here. I'm gonna be the most diligent. I'm gonna be on time. I'm going to self-study. I'm going to learn. I'm going to take my responsibility seriously. Why? Because I know that God is watching me and he is my promoter. He is the one that promotes my life. And I know it'll turn out great when God's on my team and we do it together with diligence. Check it out at GaryC.com. You're going to find a lot of great information about these kind of topics that will help you win in life. But this is a great one, the parable of the shrewd manager. We'll see you next time right here on Fixing the Money Thing. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryC.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.